Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And at the end of the last video, what we had done is we had cloned the uh, blog post template page, and I created a new one here, and I call the Success Path. And uh, what I've discovered since then, because what I want to do is I want to highly modify this and be able to use it as my own. And when we originally created it, it was over here in the standalone pages. But then, um, like I said, I started going in there and working with it, and I couldn't get it to do what I wanted it to do. And so what I had to do is I had to attach it to the site as the actual default theme page for um, for the site itself. And when I did that, then it moved it back into the theme pages here, and then I was able to work on it. So let me show you how I had to do that, just in case you have to do the same thing in order to get it to be fully editable. So I had to come into the overview here, come over here to the three dots down to our theme settings and uh, you've probably seen this before in the training and we're going to come down here to our posts our blog posts a template page and in here is where you are going to set what every single one of the default template pages is inside of your workspace so you can clone an existing template you can highly modify that existing template and then you can come in here and you can swap these out in this case here I have the home template page I swapped out with my success path home page so now what we're going to do is our blog post template page we're going to swap that out now with our success path blog post template page right there and we will update our theme. And like I said, I had to do that in order to make it editable. When I did this for the courses, I did not have to do this step in order to make the template editable at the level I wanted it to be, but in this case I did. So now we're gonna go back into our pages, and like I said, originally it was in our standalone pages. Then once you do that and you attach it to the site itself, it'll move it back into the theme pages just like it did my success path homepage right here. So now we can come in and we can edit it. And what I wanted to do was I wanted it to not end up on this page. We want to come over here to our blog home and go to our post page because now this is our default template for our post our blog post pages. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to use this on everyone, but as of right now, it is set as our default page. And then, of course, you can set other, you can create other templates, and then on the fly, in the... Um, in the blog post itself, you can change which template you want to use, and I will. In fact, let me show you that right now before we go any further, because I'm pretty sure I will forget otherwise. So let's go in here, and so we go to our blog, and in this case here, we will say this top one, we want to come into it, and we want to say, okay, which one of these... Um, template pages do we want to use? So we have our success path now, which again is set as the default, but for this one, we can say we want our hero theme uh, blog post template page. So we can submit that right there and we can save the page. And now when we come in here, you're going to see actually that both of them are going to look exactly the same. And the reason why, well, the image is going to be different. Otherwise, the format's going to be the same because I have not made any changes to the what is now the default template page. So let's come back in here and let's click on that page. Because what I want to do, and it is something very similar with the courses, is I want to make it so that the entirety of the blog post is 100% editable. And then once it becomes 100% editable, then we can make up different sections that we can just drag and drop in there for each one of our different blog posts. So what I want to do is I want to add a section and what I want it to be is I want it to be a dynamic slot. And again, when I try doing this without making this the default template page, it did not give me the option of the dynamic slots. And that's what I need to have at the level of the 
of the section. In fact, it, in one case, I, as I was working with here, trying to get it set up, it didn't give me the dynamic slot as an option at all. Uh, but now I got it figured out so we can get our dynamic slot in here and we want our content body. And you see now it takes up the entirety of the page. So what we can do is we can come in and take out this section. So now we have a universal section at the top. We have a universal section at the bottom. And now we can just save this page. And now we're going to bounce back out of here and we're going to go into our blog itself. We're gonna come down to our blog and we're going to go in and we're going to look at this page. And when we come in here, it should have gone automatically. Whoops, we gotta come down here. It should have gone automatically and it did to that default page. Now, if we click on the other one, it will have the old template this one here has now the default template. So this here was what had been the original default template, as you saw earlier, and then we got our dynamic content in there. And then here we have the new one. And so now what we can do is we can come in and we can put in anything we want. So we can put in a full column, we can put in a three column row, we can put in some headers and paragraphs and whatnot, but we can also build out and put into here, let me see here, we could add in this section. Um, we can put into here pre-made sections that we have already created. So you can make anything you want then and be able to just put this in as your dynamic content right inside of any single uh, blog post that you make. So it gives you much, much more flexibility, and that is if you do not want there to be a set format for every single post. So maybe some of your posts you want to have a set format, maybe certain categories you want to have a set format on what your page is going to look like every time, and then for other posts, you're going to want to be able to put in anything you want, and then of course we can edit all of this information in here. You can even put in an input form in here if you wanted to. I was just wondering is can you put in order form? You got products here. Yeah, you can put in order form as well right in here into a into a um, what are we talking about here? A blog post. You can put a um, an order form right into your blog post and I lost my image somewhere there. Uh, but you could of course the same thing over here with the other one that had the more standard format, you can put again any single element you want in here. We can open this up, and again, you got your order forms here, you got your products, you got your, you even, you got course modules. I'm not really sure why you'd be putting a course modules inside of a blog post. Um, I'd have to. I'd have to take a look at that and see if it actually worked. Um, whether that would or not, I'm not sure. I don't know why it would, um, because now that that one works. So that's kind of a glitch inside of ClickFunnels. They shouldn't be showing the course modules inside of a blog post. I certainly would not think. But that's it. I'm not going to worry about that right now. You get the idea. The whole idea is you can come in here. You can strip out everything. You can put in your uh, dynamic section right there and then you can just drop in any content that you made and make your blog post look like whatever you would like. So that is it for the videos on blog posts unless I decide to make another one but at this point I can't think of anything else to film. So as always if you got any questions just let me know.